Now, what else do you think is good about us? How about when they sing? And you try to sing the words you know, and those who can read, read the words. But do your best and brush your hair, girls and boys, and always wash your faces and hold yourselves up straight and tall. So when you go places, you are respectful of others. That's all what manners are for other people. Now, let's think it'd be a nice time if you could go canoeing. Would it be fun? The Southern manners, I think, will take you a lot further in life. It's important to remember that, that manners are a way of, of living and a way of being and not just a set of rules. I want to have good manners because it will help me make friends and I really like friends and, and I don't want to lose any friends that I already have. State of Things broadcasting from the American Tobacco Historic District. I'm Frank Stacio. Do good manners matter anymore? Even here in the South, where an emphasis on kindness and graciousness and consideration made the region famous for its hospitality, some might see etiquette as a little more than a relic. Well, Nancy Rasco of Hertford, North Carolina, couldn't disagree more. Miss Nancy is a 74-year-old woman who runs a five-day camp every summer for boys and girls to teach them the importance of good etiquette. We give them a, a little family experience as well as a camping experience, house party experience. There must have been a custom in the South that when people went over to spend a few nights and days, they would call them house parties. On Sunday when they begin their house party, we all refer to each other as Miss. And their first name, of course, and then the little gentlemen, when they come, are master, because it's a custom, an English custom, I believe, and French, perhaps. Um, and so it passed on to the South. I went to Manor's Camp because my parents made me. When we dropped off my sister, it looked fun. I was like, Mom, I want to stay. I want to go. You get to do tennis tournaments. You get to do swimming races, and you learn manners. And those summers I spent, as a camper and a counselor were just the best summers of my, of my life. Our room was really beautiful. It had really beautiful pillows and it had pretty beds. They were like old fashioned and I kind of like that. I like it better than cabins because you know there's not going to be snakes and stuff on the floor. I mean the floors were really old and like as you'd step they'd creak. I started thinking about it for like two years, and then all of a sudden I said, well, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to let her go. We were just hoping and praying that Miss Nancy would still be having this camp when my girls got old enough to come on. It's almost like a lost art. You just don't see this. Manners today are not like they were when I was coming up, but Miss Nancy tried to take them back a little bit so that they can be like it was when we were coming up. What they learn here is something that needs to continue. And unfortunately, I think the way our society is going, it's being lost. Thank you, Father, for these children. Thank you for their parents who trusted us with them. And thank you, Lord, for every little personality that we know we're going to enjoy this week. Please go before us, behind us, on each side.
underneath and above us. And help me to be patient with Mr. Peter and with all of us to love each other and get along and encourage each other. Amen. I thought she would be crying to come home and all. She's like, see you later. And that was it. I think that we're, um, we're going to learn manners. We are going to learn manners. And we're also, I think that we're going to play tennis. It's going to be really fun. Y'all keep your eye on the ball. This is to give you an idea of how you really play tennis. Henry, you at the other end, precious. Come on, Clara, we need you right now, sugar. Need you. And that means you two come up to the net. Come on, Henry. I majored in physical education. And I knew from the beginning what I wanted to do from perhaps early high school age that I wanted to teach children. That's a little bit out. When you teach them, you have to, of course, be in the leadership or they'll trample right over you. Caroline, please don't do that. They can't do it. You shouldn't either. They shouldn't be getting water if you haven't given them a break. The love for children comes from our Lord, not from me. I would like for them to see his love rather than my expectations being too much maybe for them. Get your racket ready, Miss Clara. You can't play like that. Uh, Miss Rasco has the most amount of energy. When I find myself feeling, you know, discouraged or something with the kids, I just look at Miss Nancy. I mean, she's... 75 years old and I'm sure she puts out more energy than I do and I'm just I'm like I've got to keep up with her. Henry, you go down here darling with this group. I like the way Miss Nancy talks because it's very nice and fancy. When Miss Nancy calls you darling it makes you feel special. Oh that accent is you'll never forget it. Kate, we're going to take our children to the river. You know, everything is, is a final, is a final breath. Woo! It was pretty, except it was in the alley. Give him another one, honey. Yeah. Now, you all did well, and you did well. So, but you can get some water now. You can get some water. Don't drink yourself to death. Remember Black Beauty. My grandma, she loves kids, and she likes to do tennis, and that's why we do tennis tournaments, and she's pretty good at swimming, too. Today, but it's always been a code of behavior based on kindness, consideration, and unselfishness, something that should not and will not have a challenge. Henry, you will learn it too, Henry. This is your first year, but you'll learn it. Growing up on the Pasquotank River was one of the most wonderful experiences, so I'm very happy to be back on the river in Pequimans County. As my mother said, be childlike but not childish. One of my favorite memories from the mayor's camp was uh, jumping in the sound uh, right down from the, from the house. Swimming at the lake was kind of scary. I liked the river, but my sister didn't. It was right beside some trees, and I thought there were snakes in it. It was kind of 
guys. I was hot and I just want to get cold real quick, so I just jumped right in. To us, it just felt like a giant playground, kind of. Henry. I don't need it though, I'm already dry. <laughs> I'm a, I don't need it though. I'm they play you and they stay down there a little I'm longer really because dry. Mr. Rascal's not uh, hold he's on just getting started real life. We've been doing this mouse game for 14 years. The first first group that uh, came here they graduated from college and not working now. What I, what I like uh, most, I guess, is being with the children that might answer even from six years old to 12 or 13 years old. Everyone is different. Uh, but I'm in the kitchen most of the time cooking for them and watching dishes. I leave the manners of the nest. The food, the food was my favorite part. Mr. Peter was always cooking the dinner. He cooked spaghetti and meatballs and pancakes for breakfast. I loved his food. Mr. Peter, he's nice. Um, me and him get along great. He took a lot of time with us because we were the only two boys on it. And it was just kind of nice to get away from all the, the girls screaming and hollering. Every night we would have a dinner party and each room would have to kind of host it. She'll call up a room number, like four, and we'll have to set up the tables and it's really, really fun. Room two, are you gentlemen ready to come set the, oh, do you look nice. My goodness, you all look handsome. They are taught to set the table correctly for five courses that first night. We all learned which way did the knife go in the fork. You had to do a fork a certain way and put the bread plate somewhere. The host had to set the table and pour water in the glasses that were on the table. Remember, this is your dinner party. So you say, will everyone bow their heads while we have the blessing? Will everyone bow their heads while as we have the blessing? I don't think that there's a lack of manners in the younger generation. 
I think it's the lack of practicing it. And then we do ours. This is mine, darling. Your napkin's to your left. Did one drop on the floor? Yes, ma'am. Look and see. But we don't want to put it in our lap so it fell down. Y'all, so they fell out of your laps, didn't they? Ow! Can you get it? Take the outside fork first. The little fork called cocktail fork. And we, we're playing like these are escargots. And that means in French, snails. I was really surprised of what they had made. And it was really yummy to eat. It was supposed to be snails, so it was really cheese. I thought we were actually going to have real snails. And I was really scared about that. And um, she, But she taught us to eat it. She didn't really make us eat real snails. Why did you not eat the chef? Well, because um, I wouldn't have anything next to you, would I? I'm not going to the next Don't tell us that, because you know you might. By eating meals together and having Sunday dinners, as we did as children with our grandparents, that we were very blessed to be taught nice manners by watching our grandparents and our aunts and uncles and mothers and fathers. You put this pointer finger, and that what you call them in kindergarten? Pointer finger on the, on the goblet bowl, the barrel of the goblet. And then on the stem are all your other fingers. Can you do that? Is that strong enough for y'all? Your fingers strong enough? I know when my mom was younger, everyone would eat as a family. Now, everyone's always gone that it's very rare that all of us are home at the same time for dinner. Everybody grabs his own little sandwich or piece of chicken and flies out to the soccer practice or the golf course. I mean, we usually eat at the counter together, just kind of all just in there. We watch television while we eat. We eat at our kitchen counter. We eat lunch and breakfast there, too. Sit up straight and tall and then knit some straight and tall. Out to the edge of the bowl and back. Don't eat nothing. And you're going to remember to go out to the bowl. C, back to me. Out to C, back to Harper. I was in second grade, so I obviously didn't really know table manners very well, but I learned table manners very quickly. We all did. Uh, yeah, come on, boys, what's the matter? I don't like it. Well, you don't have to eat it, just to have a taste. Listen. Yeah, so, uh, you don't want to eat that table One time I said, I don't care for this, and then she said, don't say anything, just leave the food on the plate, you don't say anything. Mm Any little thing that we can teach them that helps them, such as that point of fingers on the back of the fork and the back of the knife. You change hands and eat your chicken and then start again to cut. I think that when I have children, I want to be able to sit as a family and eat dinner. If you don't have that, that family time is kind of hard to know what's going on. We always ask for salt and pepper at the same time. Now, Miss Lauren, I think is the closest to it, so you would say, Miss Lauren, would you like salt and pepper? When she would ask, um, tell us how to ask for things at the dinner table, it was kind of a little bit silly how she would make us ask. You say, like, Lainey, would you care for some butter? And if they don't, Care for they say they say no, but I'd be happy to pass it to you. After dinner, I take each child individually in the parlor so as not to embarrass them at the dinner table and go over little things like not going down on their food and not going out to sea and back to harbor with their soup spoon. All right, what about your napkins? 
in your lap until you I have to be excused and then you would say may I please what be excused, be excused. and the young ladies will say may I please part of my nose but they didn't say it I know it they didn't leave the night did they? Mm. some things you kind of felt were a little bit lost and caused a little bit but then some things you could tell were good to use now I can remember how they told the girls how to say they're going to the bathroom you're supposed to say, I may have powdered my nose. It's kind of funny to hear him say that because it's so old timey. Because most people these days don't even know what that means. There's a reason for everything in manners is to help other people enjoy their meal more. So it's a very unselfish way to be. We've had a couple of them be homesick, but not many. And we are so busy, and we don't have any nap time because we need to cover so much. And by the night at 9 o'clock, they're ready to go to bed. They would put us to bed, and some people would be talking and stuff. One person got home sick. Some people would get maybe scared at night, and but like the counselors, they would like help you they, if you just go to them. Can three of y'all sleep in this bed and yes. one over there? Okay. We, um, well, Get on in the bed now, stop balancing them. Don't jump. Listen, children, I hate to keep telling you, don't, don't, don't. Listen to me. If I hear any noise, your room inspection grade is going to go down. And if I hear even more than that, then none of y'all are going to have dessert tomorrow night, okay? What does room inspection mean? It's where you get graded on how well your room... Um, it's clean. Now, is it all right to just leave the bathroom light on for you, big boy? Is that good? Uh -huh. What well, wakes us up in the morning? Up the bell, and, uh, and I'll sing, good morning to you. Uh, why can't we sleep till 10? Because, because breakfast will be will like... get up at 7, so you better go to sleep. Blue comes each morning and takes a room and teaches. I take a room and the counselors they each take a room. The top sheet and you tuck it in way underneath so that the person won't kick his feet out or her feet. Smooth. See how smooth that is? Mm -hmm. See? It's easy to do. This is the pretty side, isn't it? Usually you would think that you would do it this way, but you don't. You put pretty side to pretty side. See how I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. You hold it pull and you pull this. See how I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. And it's real easy. And then you put your little pillows back and your bunny rabbit and lamb and everything up here. Now, does everybody see what to do? Now, you may go to your rooms and make your beds in that proper way. I learned about hospitality, such as making up my bed, and I feel like boys need to make up their bed. I don't make up my bed sometimes, and my mom does it, and I feel bad, but that's just out of me being sleepy and tired. Let me take them off. You give them those, I use them for a pillow fight. <laughs> no, you ain't pillow fighting, because if you break them, Miss Roscoe wouldn't get a hole in you. All right, now wait a minute, darling. Take your feet off my furniture. This is something you all must learn. You don't treat people's, all your mom and daddy's, all your grandparents' furniture like that. Two of them go over here, dog. When she tries to tell you something, she's not mean about it, but she'll kind of let you know if you're doing something wrong. After, wait a minute, son. After you've used the bathroom, the restroom, you always 
Take a little piece of tissue or your hand if it's at home to lower your what? See, you always put the lid back down. That's a gentlemanly thing to do. See how I did it? See how smooth that come out? Ain't that pretty? See? Jeb, come over here, son. I know this is the last thing. God, I can remember toilet paper. This is when your mother and daddy have company and you have company and you're expecting people to sleep over. Tuck that triangle under there. This triangle. It was odd, but the other side. it was kind of nice when he had to use the bathroom. You smooth it out as if you were ironing your doll clothes. We all thought that was funny because I didn't really think that folding toilet paper would make a good impression on people. We also teach them that they ought to always have some little, um, either flowers or fruit in the room, and to always make the guests feel very special and very welcome. When people come to visit, um, it's really important to have good manners. You don't want to think about yourself, you want to think about them and make sure they have what they need. My mom's always told me that if you use good manners that they'll probably want to invite you back. We love being on a working farm. We always wanted to live on a farm. So we had 250 sows, and I was teaching kindergarten, and Peter had me stop teaching kindergarten to come up and nurse the baby pigs when they were born. She used to work in the hog house. We'd go in there and play with our little pigs and stuff. I enjoyed doing that. That was a lot of fun. There were chickens. There was the mule. I think there were multiple mules. She would let us go feed bread to the sheep. The goats were funny, kind of just to watch, run around and everything. The dog ate the sheep, as Nancy told me. Somebody just come pass me down for the you. Go back up, get your shoes on. I know somebody passing you barefoot. Run. Don't run! Don't run! Why can't you be barefoot? It's not nice to go to the table barefoot. Would you want somebody to come visit you and take your shoes off to eat? I do that all the time. I at home. You're not at home. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Miss Blue, she is kind of like a heartbeat, I think, for, for camp. You got your shoes on next. Mm -hmm. That's boy, that's right. That's nice. The first time I went to camp, I kind of left a little scared of her because she could sometimes be a little bit mean. She was nice, but I mean, she was kind of strict too. She said, if you didn't have your act together, she would tell you. We're going to do something different. We're going to sing the blessing. Okay? Listen to me, and I want you to sing along with me. God is great and God is good. And we thank him for our foods. By his hands we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. The best matters in the world is speaking to one another. I do believe it is. I don't know. I might be wrong. Sure, at the table is great, or excuse me is great, but saying good morning, good evening, or how are you, I do think that is the greatest. Miss Blue talked about Miss Nancy and Peter all the time. They really do love each other, I think, Nancy and, and Miss Blue. They, they tease each other and they heckle each other. I saw the connection that they had. Miss Nancy says that if it hadn't been for Blue, then Peter and I would have been divorced. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Blue must be good for them. And since Blue lost her husband, they were good for Blue. I don't have quite the deep faith she has, but I want it. Yeah. Well, that's what you, that's what you live by. It is. 
things you haven't seen, things you hope for. And see, that's what it's all about. Things you hope for, things you have not seen. A lot of kids need help in manners because it's just like the parents are so busy giving them things that they don't really need instead of manners. Some people really don't care, but I know for sure my, my mom does. If she thinks I do something rude, she'll snap on me in a minute. Bad manners are like slurping food and like gobbling food. One thing that my grandmother always said is the worst thing that you can do is correct someone on their manners. We all had to learn the recitations, which was almost a statement about what manners are today. And we spent almost the whole week learning it. Each person would have to memorize the, um, like, a thing about God and say it. Jesus is the author of all etiquette. He told us to love one another as he loves us. It was a lot to learn. Miss Nancy is um, religious, and I kind of like that because, you know, we got to learn about God more. And don't break the Bible. Hold it down in the Bible so we've got to practice with it. And walk nicely, like a lady, like your mother walks. Just walk, baby, not tiptoeing. And don't skip, man. Walk just like your dad, like a gentleman. Y'all don't we really get this tiptoeing stuff. Like Walk that. naturally, look like this, children. Like you don't have to look like a soldier, but I'm gonna tell you something, that tiptoeing stuff done look like a tough boy, and every one of y'all are tough boys. Okay. Master Francis Edward Nixon Rasco Jr. Hold it at the bottom. Hold it up, baby, don't drag it. Hold it up in front of you. No, like this. Look, sweetie, right in front of you. Here's to the land of the long live pine, the summer land of the sun doff shine, where the weak grow strong and the strong grow great. Here's to down out the whole north state. Now, don't, honey, don't flop the flower. We need to keep it. Listen, here's to the land. It's a beautiful thing. Here's to the land of the long leaf pine, the summer land where the sun doth shine. Put some life in it and don't race it. I would probably have to go with boys who have the better manners. I believe girls are definitely better at learning manners. Some guys can be, can learn it better than girls. It just depends on what type of personality they have. I just feel like boys tend to be more rebellious. But even the slightest manners will help you get through and that's all that counts, as long as people know you're trying. When we were done swimming, we'd sit down and they would have little fake telephones. This one. Don't squeeze them now. And you call Nixon and say, um, Nixon, you answer the phone and say, this is the Rasco residence. This is the Rasco, Rasco residence. This is the Rasco residence. Nixon is speaking. I don't really think someone should just answer the phone and be like, what? They're not here. Bye. 
you know about may I please speak with. Never ever do I ever want to hear that y'all have said is someone there. The most important thing that I think I learned is that I will never forget and I never knew was how to actually talk to adults. Always say, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir. Um, always how to approach them, shake their hand firmly. We, we spent about an hour learning how to shake hands. Shake hands now, I don't want to high five. All right, now when you shake hands, the lady always, Clara Parker, extends hers what? First. Then the gentleman puts his out. It has to do with swords in the old days. One thing she stressed a lot about when you're introducing yourself or introducing your friends was that you, you know, stand up straight, have good eye contact, and be confident with Mr. your voice. Carlton, what do y'all tell him? Thank you. Mr. Carlton. I had his name. I want to hear it. Thank you, Mr. Carlton. For a nice ride. For a nice ride. That's it. You want to tell more than just thank you. All right. It's nice you're sitting up so always you say up. yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. And I tell them where, that that came from France and was passed on to our people in England and then, of course, the colonists who came. I think people should say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, because it's kind to them and it doesn't hurt their feelings. Some people do and some people don't. It's just different about the way their parents raise them. Then they'll like say like huh huh and stuff. <laughs> they'll like not really say yes ma'am, no ma'am. One lady looked at me and thought like I was crazy because I said ma'am to her and instead of just saying excuse me. And the thank you notes are going to be written to those whom you have visited, with whom you've had meals, with whom you've spent the night. So you would say, dear Aunt Peggy, just making that up. What a wonderful time I had visiting you at your beach house, or your mountain house, or your house. We teach to write a little bread and butter note for an overnight, or eating dinner with someone's friend. She told us to make it personal. She wanted us to get on one-on-one -on -one type level with whoever we're writing to. I had to write one to my grandma, my mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncle. I was so tired of thank you. The youth today has just lost that and so many parents just kind of shove that aside or don't even teach their kids to write thank you notes. And if you were to send an email as a letter, as a thank you letter, it would be awful. Please come for Tea. You are invited for you are invited for big tea. That's right. Thursday, July twelfth. What time is it? Twelve o'clock noon. That's correct. Listen to me carefully now. This is important. You write out street. S T R E E T. It's another person teaching you the manners, and sometimes if you hear it from your parents over and over and over again, it can get annoying. But when it's from a different person, you sort of take it in more and you listen. But it's just nicer to say waste basket instead of trash can, bath cloth instead of wash rag. It doesn't mean that the others are wrong. Don't ever call anybody down on it because you don't want to ever hurt anybody's feelings. We all know that that's the worst malice of all, isn't it? Is to hurt anybody's feelings. I told them I wanted them to all have an Ely Agnes Bush one year. Miss Samantha, come back, darling, uh, in their lives because it's so pretty underneath, it looks like silver, like icicles. And on the front, it's green all year round. And you let it grow gracefully. You never trim that back. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The day before the tea party, when the parents came, to prepare for what we did was to help some people would go pick flowers and then they'd arrange them. We cleaned up kind of the house a little and just made it more homey and not as dirty and everything. They prepare for the tea all Thursday morning from 7.30, early breakfast on. They do their open face sandwiches, they carve out the watermelon and do a basket. Obviously this is a low tea, not a high tea. 
And I think they enjoy it. They also even go so far as to wiping off the little benches and chairs on the front porch so their grandmothers can sit out on the porch. That's trash. That's not the way you sweep. Look. Don't you know how to sweep? You take the broom like this. Well, you did right good for a gentleman. Cause most men don't know how to clean, ain't that right? Huh? I know you don't care. You get the steps off real good. And we need a big tray for the watermelon basket. Guess where it is? Under the table. I mean, the other side. Of it. Somebody reach this. As you could, could whistle. Don't whistle, baby. That's not ladylike. Do it outdoors. Outdoors is fine, not in here. Well, the thing that's kept me coming back all these years is the camaraderie between Miss Nancy and Big Peter and the bond that I have with the kids at the end of the week. Wet suits go in. Hold on. Spread. I can't talk when you talk. I can't talk when you talk. Now you need to be back down here by 11 15. What time, what time is it now? 10 30. I packed last night, so I don't have to pack anything else. Don't try to get everything out of your door. We lock the doors. If they get here before 12, we They'll lock, lock the, the doors. Front door. They're not coming in. They'll have to ride around her. In Manners Camp, we spend four nights, and on the fifth day, the parents come and we have a tea party. It was more of showing what we actually learned at Manners Camp. Tea on the final day begins with graduation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much for coming. We welcome every one of you. They have been lots and um, lots of fun. We've enjoyed every day, every trip, every funny thing that happened. Um, you ready, Miss Blue? Master John Frederick Campbell. When, when, I, when I came down the stairs, I was just so nervous. I was very nervous when I went up and I was burning hot because they don't have air conditioning. It was really hot. I was worried about impressing my parents because my mom, I could see her just having the death look with me, just staring at me. When I got through it, I just felt so relieved that I'd gotten it over with and had done it right. I learned a lot of things that summer that have helped me nowadays more than ever. When I ran for student body president, I didn't feel nervous at all speaking in front of people. And, and that actually goes all the way back to that summer where I learned to speak in front of people correctly. And I ended up winning that election. Manners give you confidence because you just know how to hold yourself. When I grow up, hopefully and land a good job, that the confidence that she helped me obtain will still be there. I'm sure it will. Etiquette is today where it has always been. A code of behavior based on kindness, consideration, and unselfishness. Something that should not and will not ever change. 
The definition of etiquette is very important because it means how we relate to people and how we treat one another and how we care for one another. One of the things that our teachers have asked for is for us to have more manners training at school. So it was decided that we would invite Nancy to come in and she graciously accepted. The etiquette of correspondence means that you write nice notes to people. Maybe your grandmother from Alabama or New York or Chicago has sent you a present or your grandfather and you want to write them and thank them. Manners is manners, regardless of who teaches manners. Manners, it's not, it's not a race thing, it's not a culture thing. Manners is manners all over the world. Thank you is thank you wherever you go. Please is please wherever you go. So it's not so much of an old fashioned Southern culture elite thing. It's whatever you want it to be. But let's play like this is a bowl. I'm going to borrow your plate a bit. Sit up straight and tall, feet under the table, no elbows on the table. That's nice. Oh, you look just so handsome and pretty. Well, I have to say, back to Harbaugh, back to me. We eat dinner in the living room, so we really don't get a good meal to be like polite and things like that. I think the manners are when you aren't rude and you're nice, you don't bump at the dinner table. Um, you have to practice them because practicing them helps you get better and better and want to use them more. We don't have a TV in our kitchen, so we just rather eat in the living room so we could watch TV. The person who teaches me my manners the most is usually my grandma because she's been here for a longer time so she knows the way to go. I'd like to see every class in every school in North Carolina and elsewhere have classes in etiquette because it's so important. When the day comes that I can't do it, I hope their teachers will do this for them. Good manners and courtesy uh, gives us a good start. Before you can make a difference, before you can really make an impact, before you can sit down and resolve a uh, conflict with others, you, you must have a good start. And good manners is a way of being able to sit down and have peace with your neighbor. We are part of something so wonderful on this earth. We have such an opportunity to serve and to share and to be part of other people's lives. We're all interwoven. We don't just, you know, exist. We live joyfully. Our Lord is the author of all etiquette. It's, it's consideration of others. That's what the basis of all of it is. She's a very spiritual woman, so I think that her understanding and her um, closeness with God really helps the feelings of true etiquette come through because uh, in the end, we're all doing this to please God. Nanny views life as if it could end any minute. She just goes out and has the best time she can while still getting all of her objectives completed. When you're with Miss Nancy, you just, you go and you do and you, and you really live. I think maybe there is no end to, to her impact. You get around Miss Nancy and, and Big Peter and, and Miss Blue and I think you become a better person. It's a higher goal. We're on top of the line. You raise an alligator underneath us, too. I hope that there are folks out there that will pick up where Mr. and Ms. Rasko leave off.
Would you all like to come back next year? Yes. No. Yes. Properly and to eat properly and not to go. My drink. If you have good manners when you grow up, you'll make more money and you'll have more friends. I had horrible manners before I came because I ate crooked. I learned to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, because I used to just say yeah or sure. And now, whenever they tell me something, I have to say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. Don't you, you, know, you think that sounds better? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Well, you all had a good time. <laughs> and, like, you can't go really anywhere if you don't have good manners. I to dinner and I got something stuck in my teeth. I would um, get, like, a toothpick or something to get it out. Never use a toothpick in front of someone else. Yes, when we do, we go to a place that no one can see us. Where would it be? The restroom. I was actually the first, the oldest teacher that I've known teaching me. I guess I need to plug the earphones in, right? Yes. Is it fun being here with all these boys, girls? Of the long, no hitting, of the long leaf pie. <laughs> they um, act crazy to us. I got sunburned, Jill, and it's hurting bad. Uh, I'm sorry. Her hair is burnt. Oh, gosh, it's burnt. Girls, miss? I would call the other girls, miss. All right. Okay. Then, then Marvin, you tell me about the boys. Do you think that was funny calling the boys master? I, th I thought it was kind of funny calling the boys master. Why? Because it's like you're the master. <laughs> there, I was closing the door on my closet, and thank you. Um, and apparently something was sticking out, and the door fell off. Little videos, video us when we run out on the field. Oh, I mean, I mean. But what if our pants fall down and, and they, and they video us doing that? Are you hearing any wind? No. I don't think you're getting any, but you'll really. Well, there's a little bit picked up right there. So are you having fun, Martha? What are I'm you having a great time? Stand right here and just say alligators. Do you come a distance? Alligators. Do you come a distance? No, I don't want you to read that part. So I'm going to tell you when. Are you Mark? 
set, go. Alligators view from a distance. Alligators are protected in Merchants Mill Pond State Park. There was this alligator on a um, on a flat tree. We didn't know it was an alligator until when we left. It went under the water. That makes me feel very uneasy. They probably like warm water. Singing. I know uh, that. Tell them about uh, Apollo. Uh, well, I was there in 1946. You played at the Apollo? Yes, did I did. you really? Hammer two hours. I played the piano. It was Honey Dripple's Boogie. I made $100. That was a lot of money in 1947. To my grandchildren, I owe uh, so much of my happiness because I know that my children have always sort of thought I was a little on the crazy side, but my grandchildren just pleased me no end because I love to be with them. I love what they do. I love their conversations. I would like to be like my grandmother when I grow up. Why would you like to be like her? Because I want to teach a, a manners camp and have fun with kids. My grandmother is sincerely cares about other people and she is one of a kind. What What are some of the manners that you learned that you use sort of today? Probably setting the table. I think it helps out a lot, especially if you're on a date or trying to impress your family. <laughs> well, I watched the movie Pollyanna, and I wanted the same dress just as her. So I designed this dress, and I um, asked the lady to make it for me, and she did. Nixon has bad manners. You want to talk about nasty stuff at the table? <laughs> mm, 